call to order the Sherburn School Committee meeting for September 15th at 6.33 p.m. Um, actually, very first, I'd like to say hi to Ms. Capaldo. This is, you've done, this is your first time. First, first, first time. First time now meeting. Um, and we're very happy to have you with us. Thank you. Happy to be here. So let's, um, and, uh, okay. I yes. bring up something? Yes. I'd like to <coughs> add something to the agenda that we had, you know, less than 48 hours notice on. You know, we're bringing up something in the selection meeting tonight. Two items concerning the, the cart road, former cart road, now the real road, that connects the back of the school to the cemetery. So there's two items on that I'd like to discuss where you think it's appropriate in the agenda. Okay. Um, can we do that just after? We get the introduction of the CSA president, so we can that to number four in the agenda. You've introduced Mr. Paul, the current superintendent, but did you also introduce Sir Mama? I didn't. I apologize. And you know what? I didn't. No, actually, it's not coming to mind. Oh, I'm sorry. I'd also like to introduce Mr. Hans Bumar, our new, <laughs> our new business manager. So, welcome. To your first Sherbert meeting. Thank you. I appreciate that. I you've been around for a while now, so. Okay, so actually, we'd like to introduce first the um, CSA Chris and co presidents. And actually, that's like Scott, since you were the former one, if you would make sure. a brief introduction, that would be great. Yeah, it's a pleasure to welcome uh, Angie Johnson to the uh, audience this evening. Uh, she's taking over as the president for the Pine Hill CSA. Uh, Dave and I finished our two-year term last uh, June, as I think most are aware. Uh, Angie has decided to step up and uh, take the helm, and of course she's uh, ready to go, and also eager to find a uh, co-president, so let's, let's uh, see if we can draw up some interesting parties if we ever get the chance to talk up the CSA. But, uh, thanks, Angie, for your, uh, your volunteering for the position, and on behalf of the school committee, we wish you the, the best of luck and another year of success. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm excited to start. Dr. Brown and Scott, everyone's been very supportive and helpful, so we're off to a great start. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And, and thank you. This is a big undertaking, but certainly rewarding, I'm sure. Actually, thinking while we're doing the introductions, we're fine. It's the new, is it the teacher rep or what? Yes, the J. So she'll be joining us in our meetings. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Um, any other community comments? So then we'll go to the reports, and we'll come back to um, Franklin's and make some of the comments for us to see if we have this topic. So if we go to we, When we're doing community comments, we'll be the opportunity from the CSA to make their uh, report if they have something to just Okay. If there's so community comments. Do you have something you'd like to talk about? Well, I mean, all we have, we've had our teacher appreciation luncheon to start the year, and um, we did our stipends and some things that we give at the beginning of the year. And our upcoming event would be um, our Pine Hill 5K, which will be this year on October the 18th. So it's the, uh, it's the spooky fun run because it's so close to Halloween. So that's our next big up and coming. And um, you know we're just hoping to support teachers. So that's all we have planned right now. And just, so everyone come out and run. You don't have to run fast. Just get out there. Teach you every time we school. Anything I'm missing, Scott? No. I was going to say thank you for hosting the back to school ice cream social yeah. for all of our that uh, families. Thing. That's always a, a coveted tradition at our school, it was beginning fun. and end of the year. Thank you. It was fun. Every, I, I was very nervous. I was my friends and no one's coming. And then all of a sudden everyone showed up as if on cue and sang. So it was lovely. Sherman time. Yeah, people yeah. show yeah. up three minutes before <laughs> an event and then they pack a house. They did. It was great. So thank you all very much. 
principles report? No, principles report. Thank you. Uh, I uh, will highlight just a few things from the uh, lengthy written report I submitted to you all. Um, kudos to a poised and prepared faculty, uh, staff, and especially the school custodians for a very smooth, albeit a little bit warmer than usual, uh, but a very smooth opening to the school year. Uh, we were excited to welcome more new students than usual uh, through, through the uh, school registration process. So um, our, our numbers not only held their own, but exceeded our projections. So that was good news. Uh, I wanted to acknowledge Lori Ryan and a slew of other teachers who were brave and embarked on camp invention for the first time this summer. I personally was hoping to target 40 participants and we had uh, 99 or 100, I think, depending on the day, uh, students uh, engaged in engineering and critical and creative thinking activities for a week long, long camp right here in this in this wing. And we will definitely be committing to that next year, uh, backed by popular demand. Uh, it was a neat learning experience. And back to that multi-age, uh, little kids, big kids, it was, it was it was a very dynamic week. I wanted to uh, acknowledge that we have 13 new employees here at Pine Hill, and I listed them for you to see. All of them have hit the ground running the, uh, with positive energy, great contributions to our school culture, and it goes without saying that our Pine Hill colleagues have embraced all of our new employees and are supporting their uh, induction and transition to our school. Uh, specifically, I wanted to acknowledge Amy Curry, our new team chair, who has been hired in a point B position, and the good fortune we have to have Amy overlap uh, for the month of September with the outgoing Marla Paula Russo, soon to be retiring uh, special education administrator. Uh, so that's been a very seamless transition, and Amy has the ground running. Uh, not mentioned in your report because this information is hot off the press. Uh, Cindy Sidman, our second grade teacher who's been out on a medical leave, will be returning on uh, September 21st. Her families have been communicated with uh, several times throughout this uh, process as we've defined uh, substitute plans and transition plans. So uh, Cindy's eager to get back and we're excited to have her. Uh, many improvements uh, at, to our school facility this <coughs> summer, and we had our first building capital uh, committee meeting earlier this month on September 10th. Uh, that committee will be meeting to follow up to determine what uh, capital improvement projects might uh, be recommended for next year. And I think I've hit on all of the big highlights. Unless there are any follow-up questions. Um, I think this is less of a question, more of an idea. I would love if where appropriate you can add links to things. For instance, um, I was reading through the report and I didn't know what makerspace was, and so I looked that up. It was fascinating. So it would be great, like a link to that so that people could learn more if they wanted to. Um, I didn't know what Mita was, the social degree program, I looked up all those. Um, so we're sticking in a link possible if this is going to be posted on the website mm -hmm. or used in especially if it's going to be used in some of the I think that would be a great way for people to learn more. Okay. Because um, it's fascinating stuff, especially the makerspace. I thought that was so cool. Um, and the only other thing is that I would love to hear more about some of the new hires, um, especially for like the best teacher. Um, uh, you did mention Amy Curran, <coughs> um, just because of their their key, like you all we know, so teachers have been here for so long. Um, that would be really nice if we could learn some more about them, perhaps. Next slide, more. That would be great as long as I have direction about what is personnel versus, you know, confidential versus for public consumption. So, with that clarity, I'd be happy to provide more information. Dr. Brown, um, last week for the uh, the heat wave we had, uh, did you have any experience any uh, any concerns during the uh, especially the was it last Wednesday or Thursday when we had the 
really high temps. Uh, we've seen a lot of visits to the nurse's office, or you know, did you have to ship any classrooms around? Uh, to get through that? Interestingly, on the hottest day, uh, the reports to the nurse's office were lower than average, perhaps due to lethargy. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, we uh, had posted, and certainly teachers using uh, you know creative understanding of the resources in the building. Um, uh, some teachers took the opportunity to conduct a lesson in the teacher's room or another air-conditioned area. Uh, the technology lab is always very coveted uh, during hot days. Uh, it goes without saying that last week was a record breaker, and uh, our classrooms and our school uh, hit temperatures higher than we've seen in. Tend to be the like this the back the back of the building all the classrooms on this back side or uh, this D wing in particular I think in part because of circulation and a big big part because we have big beautiful windows in the classrooms yeah. uh, the uh, C wing the third grade wing tends to have the best advantage on hot days it's it's uh, lower to the ground and cooler the kindergarten classrooms get very warm with their tin roof. Uh, so obviously extra efforts for hydration. I didn't keep the children indoors for recess. I considered it, uh, but I thought the cross breeze outside would actually be an advantage to the stagnant air inside. Uh, so we fared uncomfortably, but we fared. And I did try to use reverse psychology with our fifth graders to say, well, next year at middle school, they'll have climate control. <laughs> Visualize. It was, it was very important. I have a couple questions. I was reading through your report as well, and there's a couple things that piqued my curiosity and interest as well. Uh, you mentioned an, an expansion to the health and a few other areas for K to two. I was interested in learning more about that. I was also very excited to read about the inclusion of 3D printing. That sounds very exciting. And then there was a uh, comment, uh, and I thought maybe um, others might be interested as well, in the Pine Hill success team. Success is always good. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let me speak to that. That goes, uh, what you're mentioning was, was uh, rolled into congratulating our staff for their excellent and ambitious um, summer curriculum work proposals that they put forward, many of which I was able to uh, approved. So, uh, uh, thanks to generous funding and ambition of our faculty, thank you. A total of 105 days of summer curriculum work were completed. And a lot of that went into refining, revamping, or in some cases, instituting uh, lesson plans for uh, expanded curricular areas. So, uh, Karen LaDuke has been leading the work of K through 12 with our technology educators to make sure <coughs> that computer science and computer programming are robust in the morning. Of a particular focus of Lori Ryan and Teresa Bianame, our librarian and technology teacher, was to shore up uh, those learning experiences across K, K5, but particularly at kindergarten. Um, there's there's no coding or computer programming standards, if you will, for those grade levels, but we certainly know there's an interest in a developmentally appropriate uh, mechanism for exciting and engaging students. So Lori and Teresa, uh, spurred by their innovation and funded uh, by the generous uh, grant received from DSEF, uh, are bringing B-bots and basic uh, coding opportunities uh, to our students in kindergarten. Um, part of this was accepted. Our, our grade levels, grade levels one through five, have uh, historically have six special subjects per week. Kindergarten had five. I think back from the days when we were appointing a program, and I thought that was a little bit inequitable from a teacher preparatory uh, time allocation and uh, also thinking about opportunities where our kindergarten students now that they're well in the saddle of a full day program uh, could, could uh, benefit from the six special. So we thought of music and art and recreational and PE and health opportunities and we decided that a, uh, a maker space, a launch if you will, to computer programming and engineering uh, 
it's, it's really hard to, to harness our energy. So if you come on a Thursday afternoon last period, all kindergarten students would be located here in this library with our librarian and our tech teacher, and of course a lot of teacher helpers out going through stations and um, learning activities to watch for excitement in their um, basic command of higher technology learning. You asked about a few things. So. The expansion. The expansion to help, as you recall, two years ago, we instituted our curriculum through our PE teacher. At that time, we looked at the strands, uh, the, the curriculum standards for the health strands, and uh, Mr. Pines uh, developed a repertoire of lessons and learning experiences for students uh, in the, well, under the health standards. Uh, this summer, I allocated some curriculum work time for him to, to uh, look more deeply. Uh, we, we were clear on what we wanted students to know and be able to do, but where we, we really needed to add more algo grease was considering resources uh, to teach those health concepts with more manipulatives, materials, uh, thematic text, and in some cases video clips or what have you that he could integrate to, uh, to make the lesson plans uh, more robust. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the music slash art department thread is in place. Is there any, so I'm curious about what Changes the different and uh, the uh, James Barry, the director of Fine and Performing Arts, has been out a couple times to, to meet with me and check in with me. And I know that she's she's already been in our art and music classrooms uh, a couple times this year. Uh, a specific example was that time was harnessed over the summer for the music teachers at Chickering and Pine Hill to look at our choral programs and to uh, work on consistencies around the important choral standards and music experiences for children uh, in the choral area. Uh, there's coordination around art showcases coming up. Um, I right. defer to Kevin. There's there. coordination between the art educators over time on the chicory to document the way the whole curriculum is going to be understood by the time. And so chances are we reach out to those
You're not supposed to use street sweeping and drive your feet many wells. Okay, in our wells behind the school. So I don't think they were aware of that, so I sent some communication to the town administrator, and I was going to maybe get to write a letter here tonight, but he called me earlier and said that they, that he's looked that over, and they're going to remove those, those sweepings. There were several truckloads of sweepings that were dumped at the top of that cart road heading up to the cemetery. And our well is behind the school, I think, as you know, we have that little playground here. So it's like 500 feet. Because uh, sometimes those are considered sort of hazardous waste. They're not supposed to be used on residential streets or near wells or wetlands or rivers or, or anything like that. So I think that part's already been taken care of. They want to remove it. And the other part is, and it might not be something we do anything tonight, but we might want to think about it, is there was discussion that there's a gate at the top of that. There used to be a cart path. And when it was a cart path, they for a while put rocks up there because the cars couldn't come down because the kids just took it down that road anyway. Well, now it's a road. I mean, anybody could drive down that road. And so there's a gate up there. Now, it wasn't locked. I guess it was clipped on something. There was some screws or something to, to hold it together. And some people don't want to have any gate at all. Some people want to have a gate. We actually have a gate between our parking lot and that drive to go behind the school. If someone were to come down that road, they might not be able to get back up as easily get down. They'd be trapped here. They'd be behind the school. And that's where the kids walk down that driveway. They cross that driveway to get to the uh, playing field. So, you know, from my perspective, I don't really want anyone except police officers or, you know, uh, the groundspeople or the fire coming down there. I don't want the average person to be coming down that road. For one thing, they can come down at night and cause havoc. Uh, they can come down during the day and they can drive back towards either playground. If they got trapped, and if we have ours changed, they probably can drive across the grass or across the play area to get to our parking lot and leave. So uh, there's been some discussion about whether or not there should be a gate there. I know there's a lock gate on the much bigger, nicer road. Uh, it goes out the back. There's a lock on either side. And so if the police officer tries to come in that way, they'd have to stop or fire <coughs> and unlock it. Well, unlock it. Yeah, that, that's a full size road back there. So if there's anyone who's left over, my estimation see that, not the one that, that can sneak down behind the school. Now, I know we have an officer sergeant here to maybe give some input from a different point of view. Uh, how you doing? I'm Sergeant Nolte. The chief just wanted me to come down and tell uh, a lot of the keys in us like the meeting right down. We do object to the road being closed, but he would just like an opportunity to come and speak uh, speak about it. To see. He didn't have anything particular to say to me. Uh, he just wanted me to come down and tell that uh, he just wants to come down and talk. He can't right now because he's stuck in a select meeting, but he does want to come down and speak about it. And we do object to the road being closed. Okay. Closed or closed all together, or would it be okay if the police, the fire, and, and, and ground? Yeah, I don't want to speak for them, so I'm not sure what. <laughs> okay. Get okay. myself in trouble. Like <laughs> <security>. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's like, like, pretty obvious security. Um, I know the police yeah. want to come up quickly and perhaps catch somebody that way, but I think it's, those times hopefully will be few, but I think it's more apt to have someone getting up there and either by mistake or some kids on purpose driving down behind the school. Now, I don't mind if everyone who needs one has a key, but I would like to secure it myself. So I don't know what the feeling is here, and I don't know if we have to take a vote on We probably should wait until we listen to the chief. Okay, so the lieutenant just told me he was going to call, so he, he, might not, he might be out. So I'll wait a few minutes and see if he's going to come down, and I'll let you know. Like, he, he may, he's going to make a, an attempt uh, to appear at the same I believe so. If he can get out of that meeting soon enough, then I, I know he wanted to come down. He just wanted to send me down now to. So the stage is <laughs> Okay. Okay, that's basic. One, one's been settled, it sounds like, and the other is sort of people can make up their own mind and we can have our input later once we've heard all the facts. Right, so I think that's good. Let's just put it on the and we'll see it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. have two questions. Right, right. That sounds good. Thank you. Thank you for coming. No problem. Thank you. Um, okay, so Dr. Lutuki. Thank you very much. The opening of school is Second, children were learning. It's a wonderful example of how uh, 
hard to build up from here. The educators are still be concerned that it's reduced in everybody's which is wonderful. I want you to follow us on the Twitter at the Answer Schools. So we're teaching about the law school meeting last Friday. We're trying to see a variety of things that are happening across all four schools to teach about the students meeting the agenda. If you have ideas for there are others who are on Twitter too. Um, PS Fine Arts, PS Barrett is a athletic director, uh, Raider Sports, um, this is, and we did not. So I'll keep for the title of the program. Barb mentioned a little bit of the professional development. Specifically, I wanted to highlight the science professional development. Science. In order to prepare educators K-5 in order to implement the new Massachusetts standards, which have not been voted yet, but we have great intel that they will be voted um, based on the next generation science standards, but it's really focused on the inquiry and project-based learning, which are two vehicles and things that um, belong in science and lend themselves to science. Um, and <coughs> some of the educators who are involved in graduate and we welcomed all of those who educated as Dr. Brown mentioned in our mentoring reduction program led by Charlie Lee from the middle school. Um, the, the administrators had a chance to introduce their new staff. Um, we spent the day looking about what it means to develop a mentoring relationship, collaborative relationships. Um, we served a wonderful breakfast and lunch, but we went on the DS Reality Tour where um, Charlie Lee did narrating throughout the both towns, both the geographic locations and the educators to understand what it's like for a student to partner with somebody who can deliver to each other to do. Um, and also, um, where some of the places are. I had a, an educator from the high school who's in her third year who's never been to Congress. She said, this is what they can do. So it's not only the good new educator, the new mentor, see that, but she said, I've never even done this before. It's our second year for the year's reality for the mechanism of highlighting for those parties. But it's also some other things to do with things that are not. Say, I pictured like a British family bus when you mentioned the area. Are there any questions or comments? Thank you, Karen. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Mary. Good evening, all. <clears throat> it's, it's a pleasure for me to be here. And I'm happy to be serving as an interim superintendent. <coughs> I just wanted to comment quickly on the uh, format for the agenda. To note that it's a little different than the previous years. And our goal in reformatting, reformatting the agenda is to uh, be as efficient as we can uh, in providing uh, the information, but also being clear very clear about what is, will be on the agenda. Uh, under the reports piece, uh, you'll note that uh, there's another report later on in the agenda from the special education director. Uh, but moving forward, uh, under the reports agenda, the reports will actually, uh, the idea is that whoever's providing the report will be here in person. And uh, the goal is not to speak to each individual item on a report but uh, to provide uh, a comprehensive report in writing, but then to uh, highlight certain pieces of, of that report for you. And then you'll have an opportunity, as you did with Barbara, to so be very healthy to ask questions about, about the reports. Uh, the other thing that, that I'm learning through this process is uh, that you certainly receive uh, similar information for Barbara's report Karen's report and through my report. So uh, so we'll hope to uh, fine tune that as we go forward. Uh, so just a couple of comments related to the opening uh, personnel and, and enrollment. Uh, I want to echo the comments that both Barbara and Karen made about the successful opening and clearly uh, at Pine Hill the opening was very, very successful and uh, Barbara had an opportunity to, to speak in more detail about that. But what I wanted to say is that, and you all know this, but, but perhaps not everyone does, is that 
when you have a successful opening like that, it doesn't happen by chance. And frankly, uh, the successful opening is due in large part uh, to, uh, to the careful planning and that went along all summer long under Barbara's direction, working uh, Barbara's work, Frank's work, uh, a lot of work and assistance from the administrative uh, help from the administrative assistance staff uh, that were identified. And, uh, and of course, the facility, which I will tell you, I think the opening day was spectacular. Uh, I really want to emphasize uh, Barbara's comments and kudos and compliments to uh, Mr. Gimbert and his staff. They worked tirelessly all summer on not just only a variety of, of projects, special projects, but uh, all of the typical annual summer cleaning and maintenance work uh, that gets done. So kudos to them, kudos to the administrative staff, and uh, compliments to uh, the entire Pine Hill staff for a very successful opening. Congratulations and thank you. Uh, in terms of the personnel, uh, Appreciate the feedback and, and uh, we'll endeavor to provide some additional information, background information, uh, which which may round out you know some of that information for you. Uh, so that's a good uh, that's a very good uh, suggestion. And uh, I'm not going to reiterate what Barbara and Karen said. Uh, we've got great staff, except I will relate to you the story that Barbara shared with me when we were meeting. And uh, Barbara, this is your fourth year now, and. Uh, this year, if I'm not mistaken, was the first opportunity in four years for you to actually hire a new classroom teacher. That is correct. So, so I have to tell you that uh, that's never been my experience uh, in any elementary school uh, that I've worked with. So, so that speaks volumes to me to the dedication and commitment of the staff. I know there's been a little downsizing, but, uh, but it really is uh, a, a wonderful statement. The dedication of our staff here at Pine Hill, certainly. And so uh, I know there was just there was a lot of excitement about him being able to have that opportunity. And we welcome all of our new staff, of course. And then just a, a couple of comments about the enrollment. Uh, good news, uh, I believe, that uh, starting school with uh, more students than what were projected, even even as the enrollment were updated. First, kindergarten projections remain steady, uh, but there was, uh, you know, there was a total of, uh, of 26 uh, uh, more students that were projected in grades one to five, and uh, and when all is said and done, uh, right now we stand at 16 more students than were projected. 355 of those students were uh, students assumed. Were, Carried over the students from the grades, grade, grade levels last year to this year, and we anticipated 10 additional students from the in migration, post migration process that occurs every year. So in October, there will be a more comprehensive report on enrollment. We'll, uh, we'll analyze <coughs> trends that we may be seeing, over the, uh, especially over the last three years, and uh, that will start the process for the important process. Uh, putting together projections for next year and, and years after that. And uh, we'll set us up hopefully for uh, uh, being able to uh, use that and utilize that, that knowledge as we uh, go through the budget. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a question about enrollment. Do the 16 kids, do they spread across or are they concentrated in there? We uh, registered. All told, we registered 31 right. students. Yep. Uh, there were five per grade level, with the exception of second and third grade, where there were seven and nine. So normally, we see a tick up between the pre-K and third grade, right? You see that increase seven. We used to see more of an influx in first grade before we had full day kindergarten, okay. uh, and and. Uh, in past years, we registered 
your favorite two children for everyone that that unrolled families that relocated. Um, this year we lost <coughs> three children for every. We only lost seven children. So it was it, it was proportionate. We had a, a five children across all grade levels. We picked up five new kindergartners over the summer. But you wouldn't know that because they're all new at that grade level. Uh, in five children per grade level. Was that my like 16 movements? 16 kids? Is 30, we registered 31 new children all told, and we lost seven. How many family I don't recall off the top of my head. Um, um, I have that information in my office. So the, the enrollment, you just to get a report like this with a lot of information, it will be similar? So I've looked at that enrollment information. Uh, I, I will be honest with you, it's not at all how I've worked with enrollment numbers in the past. It's, uh, it's, it's different. I'm not saying I won't give the same format. I, I'm, you know, my goal isn't to, to uh, disrupt and change the past practice and the future. Uh, but, but I've started to uh, make some comparisons based on the methodology that I do uh, over a few years. I'm happy to see that. Yeah. Too. I think yeah. I'm just curious if you figured that out yet. But this is helpful that it has some information. And I guess I have questions about, always have questions about special ed. It's, because that changes so often, especially over the summer, and we've had positive financial experience in that area, and then at some point we can say it's going, to be, it's going to be negative, so it'd be nice to have that information for us as well as others. So, in the, in the next, I, it would be nice to see what changes in the spit between where we end of the year and where we are. Sure. So, so, my understanding is that last year uh, there was a, a movement to uh, to make sure that uh, enrollment, enrollment conversations and enrollment numbers and enrollment projections, uh, as well as updates. Uh, whether it, it's Sherborne, Dover, or the region, were tied to the state uh, report submissions that are required. So October, March, and June. That, that, that was my understanding. Uh, so in October, uh, as I indicated, I anticipate that there will be a much more comprehensive report that won't just be uh, a regular education classroom. We'll go beyond that. We'll certainly report out and that's just what we can do. But tie that to Yeah, so what we'll, what we'll do is we'll tie it to October 1st enrollment number, which is it's, you know, it's the basis for how the state applies uh, Chapter 7 money and, and other, you know, use that for us as other benchmark data. And, in our submissions to the Department of Elementary Secondary Education, and it has to do with student demographics, enrollment, and other data, is all based on what the student enrollment was or not with it at the time of the Okay. Can I just clarify so the number 365? Is that with the 16 students, or is that the increase of 16 or the so, yeah, so my comments are really based upon uh, the information that was last presented to the school committee in June, uh, which was an enrollment update. Oh, yeah. So, so the K-5 projection as of June 1 was 355 students plus the projection that there'll be an additional 10 students beyond that due to in migration and out migration. And if you, that, that 355 actually comes from, uh, a kindergarten number was established, that was established, and then the number of, so the number of second graders that was in the projection equaled the number of first graders from the last year. Oh, you go right down the yeah, right. Right. Yeah. So that's a little different than how, how I've used projections. But, but that's fine. And uh, so that's where the 355, so the 365 is a combination of rolling 
all grade one to four students forward into the next grade, determining through the census the kindergarten number, and then adding 10 students to the in migration and out migration process. Does that come right from Yes, that? yeah, and I believe that's what we based our budget on. But I think that that's what. 365. That's really my concern. At the moment, I admit we'll get a much more in-depth report, and then we can talk about class sizes, and I'll get dive into all of that exactly. next month. Yes. I was thinking more from a budgetary perspective. That it's the it's the re, we budget three sixty five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we thought we were matriculating a much larger cohort of students to middle school than we were receiving in kindergarten, so that was part of the, the drop. That was exactly the message I was trying to get. 365 versus 381. You did a good job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You good? I'm good. Has anybody else have any more today? Questions for Mr. Bob? All right. Oh, to put one thing on your on the format so people comment on it. I appreciate the fact that you put the uh, <coughs> agenda items on the back of Yes. <laughs> All right, so I do believe that the floor is yours, Ms. Monson. For the budget, close that. If I can close that. Mm -hmm. um, in your pack, you have two exhibits to exhibit A, which is the status of appropriations and has to disclose the books uh, for the Sherman, the Sherman and the capital. It appears the capital projects up to up to. Um, exhibit A was status of appropriations. This is the format that you had used before that you're used to doesn't have changes. So you have to to the right and let it go wherever there's a significant variance from the budget amount. Um, we could have highlighted it by keeping the fiscal result from an operational perspective. An element of surplus, which there is one, is mainly attributable to fair, very favorable variance in the legal service for school community accounts, basically driven by the contract negotiation and the staff position after the budget was finalized last year, as well as lower than expected special education expenses. The electricity and heating oil is also a significant contributor to the surplus. Um, below the line at the regional level, again, lower than expected, the lower than budget, excuse me, special education out of district to that's the main driver. The place of giving the district for other placements. Uh, the state certain pickup reimbursements for everyone is funded at 7.5%. A claim over the threshold of 41,408. And total without triple increase of 460. Thousand five hundred dollars in the second grade. How does that compare to last year? Higher. Higher. But it will be lower. Again, you had a unique situation in terms of what I'm scared of in the special ed department. Scared about who wins. You had a massive move out. It's driven from what's perspective, but in second grade, next year's going to be based on. Spend less, we get less. Yeah. I'll, I'll wait to. I'll let you finish. Okay. Um, you know, this is my fourth year, and I'm still struggling with municipal accounting and certain breaker and how we budgeted yeah. the debt. So, what I, it would be nice if we could if we could see some line item that shows what the, the circuit breaker amount either the the amount subject to the circuit breaker is, yeah. and to know, like in this case, we budget 40% of that. But first of all, the line item is net. Right. Net, net 40%, but it comes in at higher than that. I, that's what I can start getting lost. It'd be nice yeah. to see on the budget to know what the amount of subject to the circuit breaker is. And have some carryover from the prior year because the money that we get in now, 468, was from was based on last year, but the actual money that came in the next budget team are real. They actually did them all went. But but they're based on what year? Previous year. Previous year. FY14. So, so we're getting revenue in FY in FY15. So so that's the confusing part. But forward, so the whole thing. Is well, are we still going to budget the net? Oh. Oh. Where, that, where, that's where, that's where, that's where, 
mention us budgeting, we're not getting that money. That circuit break money goes back to the town. From what you understand, correct? Yeah, it goes back to your cash, but we still have to, we still have to vote the numbers. So that money comes in and that goes into free cash for the town, as I understand it. But we've always talked about it doesn't make sense to have in the town can spend that right away. Maybe in Dover they keep it for a year or two years to spend it on the special ed. Because like I said, we've had a lot of positive experience. At some point we're going to have negative experience, so we're going to get hit with a couple hundred grand. And so sort of where is that going to come from? So just being able to tie the years together and see how we budget, if that's possible, because it's great when the numbers are positive. But they're not always and you have to be right. You wait both to help her make sure when you do it what you're expecting is much different than what I do to do and what the tenants do in most districts, again, you have your total cost of special education. You then net out the circuit breakers and the appropriation budget basically is reflecting the amount net of the circuit breakers. Here you do 40%, so you have like a 60% reserve return. Well, I think we're just being conservative, yes. which makes sense from that standpoint. But you never really know what the school costs to run because of the net, the true cost. The truth, yeah. Oh, that, that piece is good. Yeah, yeah, we can, we yeah. can determine that, that piece is good. But sure. Because I can, I think you said, make sure I get this right. I can back the circuit breaker out to get a true, you know, we charge the actual account, which is the true cost of what it was. I don't know what you're asking. Well, it, it's, it's not as much knowing what the true cost is. It's just basically being able to see the numbers yeah. and not have to be personally throw up my hands and say, you know what, I thought I got it, but it's still okay. So this number, 952 well, that's from last year. It's split up now, but the number we had for May was tuition to non-public schools, 952, 398, and that's in two, two different parts here. But that that number is is net of a 40% expectation of reimbursement. Is that right? Okay. So that's not the whole no, that's not the whole. The other question I had was, I'm just going from what we got in May, regular fed transportation budgeted on, on your sheet was 107, 867. From the May report, it's 172, 867. There's a difference, I'm assuming there's a difference someplace. I can't find it, I can't find it. What are you comparing? Well, in your report, you break out the region, which is nice. Yep. Okay. In, in our previous report, it didn't break out, it did not break out the region. So, for instance, regular tuition for math schools for the region was 22,660. Yep. And for Pine Hill, it was 42,000. Yep. So that's 64,660. Yep. That's, that's one line item on our May report. Okay? So, on your report, you've got regular fed transportation, 107,867. And I can't find I can't find that number uh, on our May report. It was 172, 867. So there's a difference. I'll take a look at the May. Some somewhere. I can't. I can. Okay. Okay. I have a question. Now. Is it, I know that it. Uh, Recent advisory meeting, a number came up where supposedly, aside from you know all the savings you projected here, that there was an additional five hundred ten thousand dollars out there somewhere that uh, someone said was money that was going to go back to the town. Now, has that been sorted out? I guess when you get to the fine sorted out for me. We know this. My numbers do not include that five hundred thousand issue. Right. And when we sat with the finance director, the town of Sherman, we went through these numbers and he said, "Are these? Are you okay with these numbers?" I'm going to present to the school and the answer was yes. Then there's this other issue of, a, of an accounting issue on the, in the, in the town of Sherman that has nothing to do with how we 
So it's the town of Sherbury County issue separate from as far as I'm concerned, yes. But it could be a, you know something that falls on us or a windfall or depending on which way it goes. Could I ask Yeah, we're meet, we're meeting with <clears throat> Irene tomorrow night at our advisory committee meeting and she this is one of the questions we're just gonna bring up with her is what the clarification of this. That's from my understanding, I think it's like a there was an error in the accounting, not on the school committee, not on the school side, but on the accounting side in the town of Sherburn, that it was a typo of an extra zero, that it was five, there was an item that was supposed to be 50 and then they have 500, so now there's an additional 450 that was um, allocated. I don't know the details, and that's why we're meeting with Irene tomorrow night, so we can okay. get a better clarification, because I mean, that's, that's a big number that we need to find out. Yeah. Um, right. What, uh, <coughs> where it is, or how that's going to impact budget to return back to whatever. It's our understanding that it is not money sitting in right. school budget funds. These are monies that uh, it's money that's that's already in. The general fund. In free cash, yeah, I think yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that they just have to clarify what the difference is and that what the outcome likely will be, mm -hmm. as we understand it, is that uh, free, the Sherbourne's free cash number will go up. Yes. Exactly. The money that wasn't accounted for in free cash last year that will now be in free cash this year because it was put in at the wrong amount or something. That, that, that's what I, like I said, Irene knows more about it, and we're meeting with her tomorrow night with the clarification on that, but that would be in addition to this 670000 <coughs> if, if there is, if it exists. If it exists. <laughs> right. Thank you. I do have another question. Uh, just for clarification, uh, I was uh, wondering when it comes uh, we'll keep her as, as a great you know, financier, maybe I should say, uh, on a better term. What would you, you put it in your statement saying that um, variances, you know, for the legal ones, but the other was about 153, and then the special ed out district was 146. Well, the numbers, that's about $300,000. From what I remember from the end of last year, that number was not so large. Did you say higher numbers or yeah. returning? Higher. Both of those two categories did not exist last year, so much higher than last year. Right. So, uh, and this money is going to be uh, turned back to the town. Yeah. So, yeah. one of the things that we discuss, and maybe just think as a, a thought, just in some great we're, we're constantly concerned that sometime we might get hit with a special ed number and trying to get an account, something hit at the town level that protects us if we do have that in our, in our but we can't maintain that and deal with that. This seems like with this kind of enforcing the A300 would be a, a time to maybe have a discussion, and it's maybe early enough in the year that this could actually uh, be something that could be set up and could be created. A lot of people do that, a lot of opportunities. And, that, and I saw it actually from a town that had a huge and major problem with this. It's a town right up on 128, right in our own state, and not uh, 10, 12 miles from where the Coco's from here and had some really major issues and almost brought them into a really bad place. And one of the ways they fixed it was by doing that. I mean, there is a stabilization fund. I'm not sure whether it's used for something like this. Let me see two thirds vote now meeting the MPU. There's also a reserve fund, which might not be large enough for some of the things you're talking about. But there is a reserve fund for things that might come up here in the area, your boiler breaks or something like that. Have some sort of for the next directly just to sort of flesh out where we are. Something to balance being a better position from the free cash now than 
I mean, the, just just as on the regional school side, they have their E and D, which I don't know if it's something similar to that, where they have like a five percent. Um, sometimes we refer to it in the advisory committee as a club fund, but uh, <laughs> but, that, the, but that's the region. Right, I'm saying, but it, but at the school level to have that, I mean, we do have. Um, five percent free cash in the town, so if we're over budget, you can come and we can transfer money from free cash, from what I understand. And since it's not like the region has it because we'd have to go to both towns, but on the school, we do have the free cash, a reserve fund town wide that can be used if the police department goes over, or if, if you know, or like this year we were over on snow removal, that kind of thing. We have that reserve fund on the town level, but There's again. Money. So not the dead horse. This money is in a, a separate account in at the town level, right? And my understanding is it can stay there for some period of time, two years. The second bigger money goes into the revolving account. We can stay there forever. You, you, you can go out, you can go it over for one year and put it is to use up the money. Oh, right. Okay, that's right. That's my right. right. law. Well, uh, Rest the money, the surplus in the appropriation, that's simply on the town general ledger books. That's going to fall for our mind, just fall right up. Yeah. Okay. So it's a year. So if you want to, you know, up town town, you can either move the secretary to fund it at some level, which is a constant roll over, we're going to be able to spend it, or you create a set stabilization fund, which is why it's going to be done. Okay. We'll, we'll, put some, uh, we'll put some information together for the next agenda. Next meeting, we can pick up a further discussion. Okay. I think um, I think it's an excellent point, and uh, you know, again, depending on past practice and how uh, how we want to budget for special education, projected special education expenses, uh, there are some different possibilities in terms of, uh, <coughs> of having. Having a little flexibility in the case, we experience the opposite of what we experienced this past year. We mean that because the, the swing those numbers is quite hard. That's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, at the drop of, and, and you can't predict it in advance. Absolutely. I used to at least put money into the ground for you. You do budget extremely conservatively because you're, you're budgeting, not full circuit, you're going to have to wait comment on the, just further discussion a little bit on the free cash on the town level. One um, real uh, mission of our advisory committee last year and again this year is since we have been in a good position with free cash is trying to reduce the tax rate in the town because rather than setting up more and more reserve funds and using the money, it's, it's really more a responsibility of the advisory committee to try to get that money back to the taxpayers because we're over by that much and have that much surplus, it means that we've overtaxed. So we really, that's, that's where we're coming from. So whenever, there's a lot of departments will see the big free cash number and all of a sudden want to set up additional funds where we really want to get that tax rate down and, and that, it's not so much that we need to It's not like you can raise taxes. Somebody would say that it costs $500,000. So you have two, fam two families, you have a million dollars with of funds, you can't go back to them and say, I mean, it's not like we're going back and giving money back, saying going forward to correct the tax rate to where it should be rather than having 
these large surpluses. I know in other years we've had deficits, so we just need but to. But I'm saying the reason we have a surplus is because of unusual events. Right. So don't assume that next year we're going to be that. Right. Our, the, the budget that we set is going to be that much less than the budget was this year, um, just because it was an unusual. And I think we talked about that, Hans, right? About like the smart budgeting. I know I've talked about it with Irene too, like looking at trends rather than just saying, okay, we're not going to look at one year and say, oh, it was, so we have this huge surplus, we're going to cut all the way back. No, that's not responsible. We need to look at the trend and say, what's the spend over the last five years to determine where the right place for that budget to be. Not just because we budgeted in the past, <coughs> where is the right budget supposed to be based on trends. Makes sense. Just quickly, the last thing. Uh, last year, above the line, what uh, I'll call the operational part before you get to the region, the 354 number on a piece we get back, that was 74,000 last year. And then below the line, the 316 this year, and we get back in the 671, that was 221. So it's a, it was an extraordinary year in terms of very low, low lower than expect very low. We look forward to the conversation next month. It will be very interesting. Did they get on to All right, so let's go back to Frank's public policy and some other. Yeah, you want to do a little bit more here? First of all, bye, Rise. I don't remember seeing these children come up and read books for the kids. <laughs> 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 um, real briefly, I uh, just came back from the board select meeting discussion about um, this chain system at the rear of the school and the board uh, made it very clear that the cemetery commission has full authority for that. So I don't know that discussing that um, access point and that particular chain system is really for the school committee to discuss. Um, I brought out the panel from Public safety committee here uh, just to share that we are going to be continuing the conversation with the cemetery commission and the public safety commission on some kind of. I mean, we frankly thought that we had this all worked out and the county doesn't work out. So there's kind of a good thing. I just like to say, how many people have a chance to <coughs> beam in? Is it, I think that, you know, police, fire, DPW should all have access to be able to get through that area up there. But Perspective, I think it should be some sort of thing there that you have a teacher, okay? Because that comes in right behind the school. In fact, we have a chain between the parking lot and that back drive. So if someone can come down there and be caught in there and maybe not go back up, it might not be as easy to get back up and they could drive towards the playground or towards the back of the school. And, uh, you know, at night it would make a mess. Because during the day it could be rather dangerous for the kids there. So, I have no problem with everyone having access, but I can just see kids or whatever in the middle of the night driving down there. I think six or seven years ago there was some stones or something put there to block that off. And they were, because the people were driving down, they were removed. And I can understand that you want to get through, but from my perspective, it seems like a good idea to have somewhat limited access. The, the other road is locked, the big road, the back, that has a chain on or a lock on either end. And if one was going to be open, from my perspective, that's the one you should have open so you can come right in with a fire truck or whatever. But I, I, I would uh, respectfully disagree with <coughs> Frank. Uh, I, I think we have too many, or we don't have enough uh, points for law enforcement and public safety to respond to a true emergency. So I was going to suggest to the cemetery commission that we leave that gate open during the school hours. So if we had to respond to an incident as we did last year with the allegation that there was uh, somebody with a firearm on the right of the rear of the school, we can respond with the immediacy. Uh, I think that's critical to the safety of the students and the staff here. Um, and I have no problem securing the gate at night. Um, as you zip up and could be aware right now, we have a, a CCTV system with my personal can view in real time. So if anybody's coming up at night, with Pine Hill to pull off that access road, which I think is ridiculous to suggest considering the paved entrance off of Cemetery Lane is always open, 
that's the easier way to get, to get up into the cemetery. Um, we're able to see that real time, and we can send a, a police officer up there to investigate. That's, that's the reason why we have that system. It's, it's, it's not just from school security, while we have the students in the building, it's also for my personnel to prevent people from improving the free media or coming up and doing donuts and things like that. It was an instance um, about a week before school opened. I happened to have walked my car here. I happened to have gone to a social event. And when I was dropped back in my car after midnight, within seconds, Officer Stickney was right up at my <laughs> So it works well. <laughs> so, uh, a couple weeks prior to that, there was three individuals that were up walking behind the school. We located them when we initially got up here. We saw them on the camera. That's how they were located. Upon them seeing me, they fled on foot up into the woods. We were able to find out who they were. And they were advised. We, they, they, they ran because they thought they were going to get arrested initially. Um, they were swinging on the swing sets. There was no other, uh, you know, damage done to the school, but they were more nervous than anything else. But it was good that we saw it on the camera first and we were able to respond quickly up there to see that. Look what's more concerning is why it's inside the melting the swing set. I think we're. You know, I, with kids in the school, I'm I'm wondering now how it engages, you know, the children's from a children's safety perspective. That uh, two years ago, at roughly, you know, we there's a lot of town debate about creating this access road, which uh, goes out the side, which is closed for general traffic. Yeah. But now, uh, kind of uh, surprisingly, there it seems to be now an established road going into the back of the school through the cemetery. So I'm, I'm surprised as you know, as a parent of children here at school. So I'm trying to, I'm, I'm struggling with how do I gauge the importance of public safety, the access into the school versus now we have, you know, how concerned should I be that there's now a road coming from the cemetery into the back of the school building where the children have a playground? It's great. It's monitored by you know closer if that's that helps. But now we we have a developed. Well, there appears to be a developed road into the back of the school that was previously off, completely off my radar. So, I mean, where's the... So just to correct this question, um, sure. while there wasn't, um, we would call that material chip seal, okay. um, it's a reclaiming product from the asphalt from the street. street, sure. um, that, that road car path that's been described as many different things, um, that's been in existence well before I was born. That, that, that was there. So it's been like a gravel or something. It was, it was more dirt, yeah. but it certainly was travelable. We were able yeah. to travel and control more importantly um, through that, that means of means. Okay. So that it, 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 there's so much misinformation going around, and frankly, I'm learning a lot about the history of that road as okay. we progress. And that road is uh, our egress road should we have to evacuate students from our school site. Uh, so the, the uh, Police Department and our Safety Committee have been talking about uh, making it passable okay. all four seasons. So in the case you were right, in the that we have to mud, evacuate it's children. It's, 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 okay. Okay. Uh, it is critical to understand that, yes, we did put in this access road that leads up to LH Street. Um, that really isn't so students can be evacuated from the school. You know, the problem with an, any emergent situation is you can't predict where it's going to occur. Yeah. So if you've got an emergency situation at the corner of, of the school by that road, we're certainly not going to evacuate kids in that direction. We're going to go that one. You're going to be down. We yeah. absolutely need as many options as we possibly So I think it's a misunderstanding, just as you pointed out. So you know, I, I hear one thing, and now I'm trying to process and understand specifically what it is. So I have a better perspective now, and I think certainly anyone hearing about this would probably go through the same cycle that I just did and you know have sort of a clear understanding of what's well, it's not a paved one lane road where it's more of it's always it's been there. Okay, that's I can realize that. And now it's a set being uh, mud when it's wet. Now it's actually still passable by an emergency vehicle whereas before it wasn't up. Right. And from what I understand and speaking with the scene and director, it's also corrected an issue with water damaging some of the property in the rear of the school. So the material is you know, preventing some of the water to come down and damage the grass. So it's, it's kind of helping that respect. 
significant public safety issue. We've been talking about it in our meetings, jointly with the Cemetery Commission and any other interested parties, Dr. Brown's been at uh, some of our meetings uh, for, for quite a while. So I don't know if this seems like it's new or it seems like it's newly developed. This is actually an issue that's been hashed out, I, I thought, to we had come to a resolution this past summer and everybody was on the same page, Cemetery Commission, Public Safety Commission, all the stakeholders in town, we'd all agree what was going to happen. And then I guess there was some disagreement thereafter. Um, so this is something that's, that's been an ongoing concern. It's a priority matter for the Public Safety Committee. Uh, it's something that we're trying to address, but I certainly would invite anybody here. Dr. Brown comes regularly, but if there's anybody else who'd like to come to our meetings, we can either put you on the email list or make sure that you're otherwise involved in the discussions if you want to come and be part of that. Uh, that's going forward. So can I just clarify, Barbara, when you were on board, you understood all the ramifications and all the safety concerns and everything Yeah, absolutely. And the recommendation of our Sherman Police Department that we needed a clear progress mm -hmm. route and one that could be plowable should our students need to evacuate on foot in increment uh, in the winter time. Yeah. Okay. I think in that context was absent for me earlier today. So I haven't hashed it out yet again. Thank you for educating me. And certainly public safety and, and specifically high health safety is, you know, something we all communicate about frequently. In the last two years, it's, it's, it's um, in response to information we've gathered from other communities, um, situations, we've been more vigilant than ever. I, I think it would be great if the school committee could be connected. Before the little thing was really last year, we, had multiple sessions about school safety, and we voted in to spend money to enhance the security system and all. So it'd be good for us to have the full picture rather than just sort of as an as need to know. Would be great. I mean, what is, would be on any agenda you want to be more than willing to come in and Thank you. We should, we should definitely do the future agenda. Maybe after the budget season. Yeah. <laughs> well, if I know behind the budget season. Thanks. Um, does anybody else have any more questions or comments about this? Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. All right. So, yes, we're at FY17. I don't have any time to come to review. Uh, in your packet uh, was a a, uh, a problem in almost final uh, operating capital budget calendar. Uh, there, there's actually still a bit of uh, it's still a bit of a working document, and uh, it appears to me that there's still uh, one uh, date to be determined regarding capital, and, and that would be. Uh, when uh, the Sherman School Committee meets with the uh, Sherman Capital Advisory Committee for the... Um, I don't know. I'll have to check yeah. with No, no, exactly. So we just need to, we just need to talk about that mm -hmm. and uh, plug it in. Maybe it has to be, uh, you know, maybe it's a, uh, a window that we, we plug in so we have a, a good understanding of of uh, when that meeting may occur. There's a new, there's a new chairperson of the uh, Capital Committee, I think, and I'm not even sure who that is at this point. So yeah. once I communicate with that person, then we'll have to talk about the when we're Sure. So we'll, we'll keep working on that, but, but we certainly are in a place where 
we're starting the process and, and we, uh, we know where we need to be or, uh, up to that point. And then there's still one date to be determined uh, for the operating budget presentation to Sherman Advisory George. So uh, we've, we've listed three possible dates. We, in and I, reviewed this and uh, we're looking oh. at previous years. Yes, that's down below. I'll go through that. I'm, like I said, we're meeting tomorrow night, so I can I can clarify one of those dates before you're done. Okay. And then we're meeting, I guess, about a month from now. Um, yeah. And then if it's not before then, we definitely have a clarify for that. So, so this has been a helpful process for Hans and I to, to go through and uh, hash this out. And, uh, so we appreciate the patience and uh, as as those two dates get finalized, we'll, we'll of course update you and uh, make sure that everyone's as well aware of what the, what the calendar is. And I also think it was just today, cited the October 21st. October 21st worked. I moved our up. yeah, I moved our meeting. We were supposed to have one on the 14th, but yes. we moved it to the 21st. So, so, right. we're so but then we're also going to invite. Oh, yeah. Um, all members of the school committee, if they want to come and attend. Um, so, it's Sherburn Advisory and. That's somehow, it'll be our advisory meeting where you kind of rehash to our entire committee the fiscal year 15 recap, like you just did here. Um, but it gives a chance for our whole committee to ask questions or. I think it also can have some strategic discussions about uh, FY17 as well. Um, so I felt like it could be very helpful for everybody to be there if you can, because it'll uh, give you a chance to hear other comments other than me or Vicky, the normal liaison that would be at your meetings. And it would also be the Sherburn reps from the region would be there as well. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, it's not obligatory. So we have, my understanding is in the past, uh, <coughs> there, this meeting has occurred in the past, but typically it's been uh, administrative representation and perhaps the chair mm -hmm. of the school committee as well. So the suggestion is that if all members are more than welcome to attend that meeting, uh, but, but I think it was going to be Right. right. So perhaps we should be posting cases in the schedule. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll look at that. I mean, uh, yeah. If, if there's going to be deliberation, then it has to be posted at the Sherman School Committee. If another town committee is inviting you to attend their meeting for informational purposes, and the school committee is not going to be deliberating, then uh, then the open meeting law guidelines. General's office established, established, established it doesn't mandate that the school committee has even though one or a quorum of people. But I think the idea is not for us to deliberate. I think it's right. to be an exchange back and forth between the two things. One other thing I can do is clarify the time. Like right now we have it at 715. I can do a time for the region and a time for the for the Sherwin School Committee, so you're not necessarily going to have to sit through both if you don't want to do it. So I'll figure out, probably do yours first, because yours will probably be the easier. <laughs> so, or less questions probably, but I will, uh, I'll, I'll figure that out and you know the. Okay, great, thank you, I appreciate yeah. that. All right, uh, I'm going to set the capital planning update. Are you going to do the past one? Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to review the, the update. Uh, here's, we have an update on the FY15 capital project for this year. Um, the air handling is the last and unit project. Again, I've got a little bit to the right on the funding. Um, I've been the air handling is upgrade for that. It's like the food class in November. We're off the food, so we'll draw that over the summer. Soccer, um, roof installation work that was put out the group. We got no bids, so we, uh, we spoke with Eversource. Uh, it's an institution program they have. We actually met with them last week, and they were programmed on last week. Um, it was very promising that we had to do this before. We 
gone to contractors and asked them to give us some estimates. And sometimes we have to go forward with those estimates. And, and some of the things we have to go back and correlate because we talk about the, the heaters in, in the classroom. Well, the plan had like, you know, 4,000 this year, 4,000 next year, and spread over like 10 years. And so we did it once, we got a bid on it. Okay, and we did it all at once. And some of the, uh, the curving, so forth. Some of that we put together, some of it we had to separate out what they have in the plan. So we have to, that's why we have to go back and that spreadsheet to pick those things up. Okay, but well, we've, been, we've been conservative in a lot of things and yeah. tried to be really conservative, but that can work against us. You know, when we present 200 grand and it comes up to be 50, yeah. So some of those, if you don't actually have kids in hand, you have to go with it. You have to go with the, you know, the or whatever, right? That's that can be one of the things you hit on. Which I think would be really helpful it, for me for helping with my research, but also just so that uh, in the public the knowledge is going back to that document, kind of giving a presentation of what did it say were the projects that we should have done up to this date, as well as what projects have you leaped ahead on to kind of give us a sense and not like a, a recap of where we stand as we go into this uh, capital budget number and that's something we have to vote on. So, A, we would understand it better and we can explain it better and as well as the general public can see it as well. That's something Greg and I talked about going through that, through that check that they've got. One problem is, is that the company that made this plan they're not concerned about whether the money's coming from, or whether it's classified as a capital project. So they talk about replacing door hardware and thresholds, and they'll have, you know, $2,000 here, $2,000 here, $2,000 there. And those things, probably, we are doing some of those things under regular maintenance. And so it doesn't show up in our capital request. But those are the things you have to sort of discuss and plan to get together on Thursday and go through that. Find out things that aren't in the plan, keep it in the plan, um, create a creative job. Yeah. And we're looking at then now in the five year future as opposed to only two or three years. Where are we about this project plan? I think about three years in. So, so if the advisory and capital would like to have a three to five year projection, so we have to get a First of all, we have to worry about 17 to get a front 17. And then as we get closer, we have to project out three to five years. And remember, the uh, the roof is in the sixth year. And that'll probably be a million dollars. Okay, the roof. So that's something that uh, capital would keep on the radar if we're trying to space things out. And we might have to look at the roof, depending on the way these winters have been. You might want to do it a year early, three years earlier, or a year later, depending on the condition of the roof. Um, so even though you have this document, you still have to use common sense going forward. Well, is that something you can set money aside for a big capital project? Is there a way to reload your account? <laughs> uh, so for instance, we had a windfall this year. If we know that the is going to cost a million dollars. Okay. And one thing the town can do is if the free tax is building up, you could give back the taxes or you could fold it and then, you know, maybe you'll have enough to buy a, the truck the town needs or you have enough to do a $20,000 winter project and not borrow it and add that to the tax base. So there's more, one way to look at that free cash and that's rather than just getting it out. And, and of course, I think Dover keeps theirs mm -hmm. and then when they have a fire truck raising a thousand things fine. Yeah. We did that last year. We bought a number of capital items because of our large free cash <coughs> number. There were, we bonded a lot less than we had in the past. So I think, and we have talked about it in some of our meetings, that it's critical right now as we're having another year with, with free cash to look at the capital items. So yeah. since we have it now, maybe it's the time to do some of these things, but also you know, don't just do them to do them, but if we have them on the radar screen, that's the plan I have. I've got a few questions. I'm going to be a 
if, so from that standpoint, if you're gonna if you're gonna borrow, uh, you've got two hundred thousand capital items every year consistently. At some point, it doesn't make any sense to borrow money because you're just you're just paying it, right? Does it make sense to to work? You know, some number, some small number, fifty grand into the operating budget every year, as opposed to yes. <laughs> As opposed to, I mean, so you need projectors or you need something. We're going to be replacing things. Why not just have a part of the of the operating budget? Carry some part. Yes, I would agree. Carry some some number of your operating. So we did increase our extraordinary maintenance last year. So yeah, maybe yeah. it needs to be put that again. But it, but that's like for both the furniture and things that are just completely not usable. It just seems like if we came up with a number and I don't know, did, 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 did the line capital item or something like that. So is that what's the um technology plan? Is that kind of a is that something where you're projecting this to you how much you're gonna be spending on upgrade technology? Yes. And is that part of the operating budget? The technology supplement plan that drives the operating budget okay. in that area. Technology has a replacement cycle, and that determines what the amount is for the technology plan supplement. Okay. We've already done our, our done operating, right? Yes. Nobody yes. uses their done capital. Oh, okay. No, yeah. We'll but if I had a question on that, let's say that we have a large IT project that a lot of people would be to entertain that as a capital project. Right. Well, one one thing here is the whole clock system, the bell system. Oh, that's we're right. talking about. That's where it's going. Right, and, and that could be a couple hundred thousand in itself. Well, we'll be going to talk about one more with the telephone. Yeah. The whole internet. Great. Right. We're just going with over IP, talking with with Anthony, the IT director, uh, this morning. I think you need some specific work just on your infrastructure and then the service. That's good. That's good. Well, it almost has to be a capital item because the budgets are tight. That's, that's what it's going to have. I don't know how you handle it. I came to you and I said, look, I have a $45,000 IT, which is a combination of you know, upgrading all your services you have anyway, plus some responses to the year. I would assume I would submit that as a capital project. We, we hope it's a warm winter and we'll save it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. And so, if that's the type of thing, Anthony has a handle on it. You should bring it to us well before our October. Well, and that's why I was that I didn't even think to invite him to our capital planning meeting last yeah. week and a discussion with him that he's coming up with me that maybe this is a live IT piece. If I will, I'll be able to sit the next meeting. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, um, let's go to the, just a really quick, since we're running a bit long, superintendent search update. Um, I just wanted to make sure everybody knew that, that we're in the process of creating the selection committee. Um, there's been outreach to parents and members of the community at large who have an interest in serving on the committee to fill out the nomination form, which is available on the Pine Hill School homepage. Um, and also the opportunity for members of the community to share their views at um, by participating in the online survey, uh, which is also on the website. And also to say to the members of the school committee, if people are interested in serving, I've heard from one member, but if anybody else is interested in serving, please talk to me. Um, let me know. And the members of the SSD, so this research committee, um, are going to need to discuss how to create um, a school committee, school committee members on the team that make sure we all have different skill sets and different skill sets and offers different things. So, very sure let me know the next week or so. Yes. Um, and, oh, consent agenda. And, and, and oh, sorry, um, yes. one more item. So, uh, in tomorrow, isn't there a uh, meeting? With parents? Yeah, that's yes. cool. So, um, so it's an effort to spread the word. Besides all the online uh, opportunities, but physically, if I remember the time and location, in the morning, it's, you think? 
It's in the afternoon. Right. Okay. So I don't know if the CSA picked up on anything in the last class or not. I don't think they put it in the last class. I didn't see it in the last okay. class. Okay. But something went out. Mm -hmm. from, the, yeah. from the, I know, from the, from the, from the high hillside. Right. We've gotten some stuff through. But, uh, yeah. This yeah. Is, it's, it's all happening quickly, so we yeah. want to make sure that the parents know. Uh, the community members at large you know that there's uh, some, some ways to be involved. So for that meeting tomorrow, again, uh, it's a focus group for parents, community members, 1 o'clock to 2.30 at the Sherborne Town Hall. Okay. That's tomorrow, September 16th. And then there will be a second one, and I can't remember, September 29th, thank you, from 7 to 8.30 at the Dover Sherman Middle School Forum. Got it, that's what this point up, and I think that um, there's, there's been some blast going out on that, but I think there could be a specific blast that has that in the subject line and that is so that parents do know. It was in the subject line, it was in the subject line, um, and I believe the specific blast went out with the, you know, she's not today. So we're not sent one out earlier this week, specific um, or end of last week. Well, then she had to update the times. There was so a superintendent search community input schedule was a subject line yeah. for an email I came out today. So I think okay. uh, still maybe not quite as, uh, you know, it's, it's still, I think, maybe difficult to tell that action needed right away for that subject line. So it's still maybe one more. <laughs> At some point, though, people have to actually read their emails. Besides personally inviting people. It's not them. our responsibility to cause them to actually. That's right. Yeah. They, they, everyone call. Make a phone call. That's right. <laughs> have to make a phone Whether they won't answer the phone. Okay. So, right. um, personal <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Um, the consent agenda. I propose that we get some the. Uh... Do we have to see some information? No, is it okay if it's just when you have it? No, it's okay, but this gives them opportunity to, to, to thank to, okay, to thank the first class of Barbara to do that. I'm excited to put uh, before you uh, a request to accept a donation from the outgoing fifth grade class uh, that left us in June, the class of 22. They raised $520 that they donated or would like to donate to the library specifically for a uh, uh, poetry cafe in honor of, of the recently retired Mr. McAdams and uh, the parents, reps, and Mrs. Ryan worked together to think of some great resources that they would set up uh, in a designated area. Bongos, perhaps lava lamps, and lots of inspiring poetry. <laughs> Excuse me, thank you. Um, did anybody make comments about the minutes? I move that we accept the uh, consent agenda as uh, written. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so number 10 is just communications that are in the packet that, um, did anybody have any questions from any of those? Uh, my only point is next with the enrollment report, get the email on that changes in federal. Um, so items for our next meeting, which is October 13th, I know I have it now. Class size, our report card system, update on the playground, um, we talked today about the circuit break and rollover spent stabilization fund. So this is just some stuff for the by grade report. That was not the intent. <coughs> so we could certainly provide a report on the four parents uh, separately or as part of it. Maybe this thing would reflect. Right. 
Thank you very much, everybody.